I'm convinced my computer yeah, hates me. Smiling faces over there, huh? That's great. Yeah, hey, so you guys are all ready to be detectives tonight? Yeah. Avery, what are you doing? <laughs> oh. oh, there you go. So, okay, so you guys are all ready to be detectives tonight? Oh, look at that. Detective Laura is already on. That's great. And <laughs> Whoa, and Ivanji, look at this. Looks like we might have a full house tonight. That's going to be great. Yeah. All right, so does any, do any of you know what a primate is? Except for Ivanji, I know you know. Uh, <laughs> that's great. How about the rest of you? Do you guys know what a, uh, a primate is? Looks like we might have a full house tonight. That's going to be great. Yeah. All right. So does any, do any of you know what a primate is? Oh, that's causing a, like an echo. Uh, yeah. How about the rest of you? Do you guys know what the uh, primate is? Yeah. How's that? Is the echo gone now? Yes. Yes? Okay. Yep. All right. Let's see, I'm techno technologically savvy. And look at that, it's Avery's mom. That's cool. And mark it on. And, okay. So I, I asked the question, do you know what a primate is? This program put together um, by an educator at the New England Primate Conservancy. Every Anybody but Ivanji can answer. I know he knows. How about, you, can, you can even put it in the chat if you want to, if you don't want to. Unmute yourself. That's okay. Uh, a primate is a like in the same family as a monkey, uh, orangutan, an ape, and a human. I'm pretty sure. Okay. And monkeys. Yeah. Very good. Well, actually, I'll let um, uh, our detective Laura answer that question about. I think that was a great answer, Mark. <laughs> Thank you. We are we are primates too, but also um, there are a lot of other primates. We as human beings are all in the same species, but there are lots of different species of primates, and we're going to learn about some of them tonight. We're going to learn what else? We're going to learn about rainforests. We're going to learn about rainforests, yeah, and I'm we're going to learn it. We're going to learn about the disappearing rainforests and what maybe we can do about it. Ooh. I've never been into it. Well, actually, I've been in the Caribbean. So is that almost like being in a rainforest? It was um, pretty humid. It is pretty humid. The, the, there's the definition in the, it's, it has to do with the, the definition has to do with the rain balance, the heat, um, the soil, and, uh, you know, the, the different layers of trees. It's usually near the um, equator. Right. Mark said homo sapien. That's right, Mark. There you go. Yeah, Mark's an interesting young man. We've we've seen him the last couple of nights. He's only a seventh grader, but he's uh, got a lot of information and he's extremely curious. That is the best quality to have in a detective and a human being or a homo sapien. Thank you. <laughs> and he's very polite too. <laughs> yes. Yes, Anya. Good. See you in this in chat. All right. Um, all right. Well, we've got about a minute to go. We are live on Facebook tonight. Um, I had to 
for those of you who have been with us the last couple of nights, it was very painful as I tried to make the connection to the Facebook pages um, because it wouldn't connect. It just kept processing, it kept going around and around. I was getting dizzy watching it. But I signed on 20 minutes early tonight just so that we knew that uh, I was hoping that was the problem since everything seemed to uh, work uh, better during the middle of the day. So, all right, how about early humans? Is that one of the, uh, can you see the chat box? Yeah, yeah. yeah, here we go, all right. Well, I know we've got some people from other parts of the country right now, in particular oh down in Louisiana. Wow. Yeah. So that's pretty cool, huh? All right. Um, let's see. I've got people sending me all sorts of messages. What is going on there? All right, just give us just like one more minute. I have to um, get some information to somebody. Uh, and then we'll get started. So just so that all of you know this, um, this is being recorded. We're going to be um running this live right now on two facebook pages um we're going to be running it on the mr science fair facebook page and the brockton library facebook page um and then um let me see okay there we go um and then uh it's going to be run on Brockton Community Access Cable starting next week sometime. So uh, if by any chance you've missed parts of it, um, then you're going to be able to uh, watch the whole thing later. Okay, so I think, uh, are we ready, Detective Laura? All right, perfect. We are ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My name is Pat Monteith. I'm the uh, coordinator of all the STEM week activities for the Brockton NAACP, as well as the Brockton Library. Paul Engel, who's the director of the library, is on right now. And I know Phyllis Ellis, the president of the Brockton NAACP, is going to be on in a minute, since that's who I had to just send the link to. Um, but it's been a wonderful couple of days. Uh, we've got tonight's program and then tomorrow night's program. This is the first time that we've tried doing four complete days for our Stimulate Your Mind um, with a Family STEM Week and Career Showcase. And this is the third year that we're going to be doing it. Um, I want to thank uh, several people, or a couple of people besides um, the library and the uh, Brockton NAACP. And that is uh, our newest sponsor for this event, which is Jacobs. Um, but uh, other than that, I think there's not much more I want to say because we have an incredible detective in our midst. And um, I hope you all get ready to uh, uh, have a very interactive and um, fun night. And I know uh, we did some rehearsing the other night and you're all going to be in for a really great surprise. So uh, here's our detective, Laura Bear, who uh, is an educator with the New England Primate Conservancy. And take it away, Detective Laura. Hi. So my name is Laura Barr, and I'm here with um, Ezra Werb. Oh, so Ezra and I worked with the Primate Conservancy, uh, the New England Primate Conservancy, to create this curriculum this lesson for you. And I am so grateful and um, excited to be able to share this with you tonight. Um, I want to thank Pat for giving me this opportunity and thank you to the Brockton Library and thank you to Mr. Science um, for letting us do this. But mostly I want to to start and thank the New England Primate Conservancy for giving me the opportunity to be able to create this. Um, 
this lesson. So first thing I want to do before we get started that is I would love for you to go into the chat um, because you're gonna be muted. So go into the chat and please just put, um, if you're a student and what grade you're in, and if you're not in school, you're a student of life. So you could just say like for me, I'm Laura Barr, I'm a student of life. Just go ahead and put it in the chat. I'll put mine in too. Okay, I'm seeing. And if I mispronounce your name, it's, uh, I'm very sorry. Um, I say my name, um, yeah. So it's Avangi, I believe. Is that right? Avangi. Avangi, sorry. Um, and is it Jacques? Yes, Jacques or, Jacques or Jacques, either way works. Okay, and you're a freshman in high school. Fantastic. And we have Deborah, Deborah Curtin, student of life, Mark in seventh grade, Vivian Pineview Middle, Borodine. Yes, that's correct. Yes, um, and I'm in 11th grade. This is awesome. Who else do we have? Anya. Naomi, Sophia, I know these ladies. Um, uh, <laughs> and Kathleen Downey, my fellow NEPC writer. Um, and yes, and I'm Laura Barr, but my name with the B-A-H-R is sometimes if you were, um, it comes from bear. So bear is kind of correct too, if you say Laura Bear or, um, if you really want to pronounce that A ah in the middle, you could say Laura Bahar. Not many people say that, but I sometimes do, just for fun. Um, okay, so before we go any further, I just want to, again, thank you all for being here. And I'm going to tell you that we're going to have, um, at the end of this, a really sweet project for you. Um, but I don't think we're gonna have time tonight to do the whole project, but it would be really good for you to have a pencil and a piece of paper and a, um, or something, maybe you can write it on another uh, window um, on your computer, just so you have something to take notes on so you can go back and put this together. And if you do this, if you go ahead and finish this project, take it to the limit. Um, I'm going to write a narrative and you can turn it into me. You can email it to me and I'm going to write you a sweet narrative. I've been an educator for a long time and I don't want to brag, but I'm, I'm really good at them. I can write things that'll make you sound as good as you are. <laughs> so um, you can send me your project at the end and I will write you a little narrative. Good for a teacher, good for a parent, good for bragging rights. And we'll give you also this. Open the file first. Oh, it's open. Oh. Um, I'm going to give you this fantastic spyglass badge designed by Deborah Curtin, who is here tonight. And that will be like your little, you know, award. It's pretty cool. So um, that's, a, <laughs> that's hopefully an incentive to finish the project. All right. So we're going to start with the introduction. And I hope you like it. when I have to open. Oh, my tech guy is going to help me out. <laughs> this is Ezra. Oh, oh, see the oh hold, hold quickly, please. Here's some hold music. Dun, 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 dun. That's that's uh, Peter Gunn, I think. All right, here we go. All right. Do you like detective stories? Well, the truth is, these days, we all need to be environmental detectives because we have some pretty big cases to solve. One of the biggest issues affecting endangered species in the lungs of our planet is habitat loss due to human activity. But why are humans cutting down the rainforest? Well, because they use the land and trees to make all sorts of different products. 
But the truth is, these products could be sourced differently and reduce the impact on the animals that make the forest their homes. But what are these products? And who are the people responsible for producing and distributing them? To crack the case, we're gonna take five steps, each of them with different action items. And I'm gonna show you how to take each of those action items and make yourself a pretty sweet project. Are you ready? It's go time. Put on those detective hats, because we have some mysteries to solve. All right, if you have a detective hat, you can put it on. I do. I mean, that was my hat. So I'm gonna put my, I'm gonna put on my hat. There we go. All right, so that's just the introduction to the video. Basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at what are the causes of the disappearing rainforest and what do we have to do with it? And is there anything we can do about it? So I would like you, if you wouldn't mind, to go into the, the chat right now and just write your favorite animal. Like for me, it's, it's a toss up between hummingbirds and cats and butterflies. I know that butterflies are insects, but, but just put in the chat your favorite, your favorite animal. I got elephants, I got penguins. What else do we got? Koala bears, definitely. Red pandas, Anya, you're gonna be very happy. Brown pandas, <laughs> a cat, a lion, and lamb. Ooh, yeah, that's good. White lion, gorilla. Okay, so, um. One of the first things I'm gonna ask you to, to look at is we're gonna watch a Prezi and Pat's gonna share that with you. Oh, I got a snow leopard, I got a puffin. Um, so we're gonna watch a Prezi and this is a Prezi about the rainforest. And this was created by Deborah Curtin at the New England Primate Conservancy and it is awesome. Thank you, Pat. Can we hear that awesome, the awesome rainforest sound? Can you unmute the little, the little sound at the, oh yeah, thank you. Okay, I just love this. <laughs> I love the sounds of this. Okay, what defines a tropical rainforest? So you can think, you know, if you know the definition. So first of all, it's rain. Um, uh, just push the little arrow again, and we get a, the amount of rain is over a hundred inches per year. A lot. Okay, next slide. Heat, it's very, it's got a lot of heat, very humid, and between 70 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Next slide. And poor soil. Um, so the rainforest, the soil is not, uh, yes, constant air, moisture and heat create poor soil conditions. Okay, next slide. Rapid decomposition of matter on the forest floor allows plants to quickly sap the soil of its nutrients. So things to decompose really quickly in the rainforest. All right, next slide. Okay, location. So these are where the tropical rainforests are in the world. They're found on every continent except for Antarctica. Um, and you can see, um, you click the, yeah, and they're located near the equator. So you, the equator, um, does anybody, the, the equator bisects the, the world. <laughs> and so basically you can see that they're all, um, where they're all located. And they're all in the middle, in the center of the globe. Okay, next. Beautiful. Okay, keep going. All right. One of the other, and this is for us, the most important aspect of the rainforest is biodiversity. Biodiversity. Um, biodiversity is essential for health, I think, 
across the board in every aspect, but certainly for our planet. Can you, um, can you push the, the, little, the next slide? Thank you. Tropical rainforests are home to roughly 50%, 50% of the world's plant and animal species, yet cover only 2% of the Earth's surface. So 2% of the world's surface, 50% of plant and animal life, or half, okay? Next. And they have layers. So a rainforest has different layers and different life lives in every layer. So to accommodate the vast diversity of flora and fauna living in vertical layers. There's a <laughs> from the ground. To the tree top. Each layer has perfect sustaining life. I, I love that. <laughs> I love that too. <laughs> Likewise, each creature has its role for keeping the rainforest fertile and alive. This interdependence creates a balanced ecosystem. So what are the layers of the tropical rainforest and who lives where? So as we go through this, you can look at the different animals and you can think. You can think if you might want to spend a little time going a little deeper into the life of this animal as we go along. So the, the layers are the forest floor, the understudy, the canopy, and the emergent layer. And that's there at the top. Okay, next one, next slide. Thank you, Pat. Okay, so the forest floor is covered with decayed matter like leaves and um, things from the trees. Moisture and heat cause fallen leaves and other matter to decompose very quickly. A leaf that might take one year to decay in your front yard could decay in a few weeks in the rainforest. Because of the lush trees above, little sunlight makes its way to the floor. It's dark. Many insects and reptiles make their homes here. Wolves might live on the forest floor. Poison dart frogs, so cool. Okay, next slide. Oh, wow, there are over 200 species of poison dart frogs. Their bright colors signal danger to other animals. The brighter their coloring, the more poisonous they are. Pretty cool. Although they live primarily in the leaf litter, some lay their eggs and raise their young in the protection of the forest canopy. Rats, mice, and other rodents. Armadillos and anteaters. Those guys, I love, I love armadillos. <laughs> Giant tortoises. Cassowaries and other terrestrial birds. Uh, look at that cassowary. So cool. And if you live around here, maybe you've seen turkeys walking around, and they're pretty cool too. Um, tapers. Tapers. Mm -hmm. Tigers and other big cats. Baboons. Patas and other terrestrial monkeys. Chimpanzees, gorillas, and humans. The trees above are so dense, it can take almost 10 minutes for rainfall to reach the forest floor from the canopy. Can you imagine that? 10 minutes for rain up there to get down. Understory, this is the next level. Plants are short and include young trees and shrubs. Many of the plants that grow in the understory are those that we see as common house plants, like maybe like my fern back there. And there's also one right there. I love my ferns because they do not require a great deal of sunlight. Lots of insects live here. Who else might live in the understory? Red-eyed tree frogs. Snakey snakes. Dionan Clock of the Rocks. I think I said Dionan, right? Um, I looked it up earlier. I hope I said it. Uh, only males of these species are brilliantly colored. So just the males look this bright. Males congregate in a lek where they bob and dance to display beautiful feathers. Each male has his own branch. 
Beneath his branch, he has a clearing on the forest floor where he invites females to join him in his mating dance. Females only select the best dancers. You, you really gotta learn to, to dance if you're a crack of the rock. Um, after mating, they build their nests in rocky outcrops. Their nesting sites are what give this spectacular bird their names. Cotis, Cotis, Jaguars, Marmosets, Tamarins, Arceus, okay, and then we go to the canopy. And apologies to all of the animals whose names I mispronounced, I'm sorry. Um, this is the primary layer of the rainforest the canopy is a maze of leaves, branches, vines, nuts, and fruit. Because this layer produces so much food, many animal species make the canopy their home. What species might we find in the canopy? Sloths. Toucans. Red pandas. That was one of your favorite ones like in the chat. Flying fox is so cool. Capuchin monkeys. Capuchin monkeys live in the canopy, but visit the forest floor to find their favorite nuts. They use rocks as tools to break the nuts open. <laughs> so they use, they, yeah. Spider monkeys. I love proboscis monkeys. It looks like that. Okay. Or girl. The squirrel monkey. Orangutan. Tree kangaroos. All of us monkeys. Ruffled lemurs. Lingers and other leaf monkeys. Then we have the emergent layer. This is the very top. At the very tops of rainforests, high above the canopy, stand the tallest trees. Trees may be as high as 200 feet. So just think about that for a while. 200 feet tall. There's little protection from sun, wind, and rain. Top tree branches cannot support much weight. So who might live in this emergent layer? They're at the very top. Well, we have bald eagles. Harpy eagles. Harpy eagles are among the rainforest's most fierce and powerful predators. Their huge, sharp talons can be as long as bear claws. Whoa! And wow, this is my third. <laughs> this is my third time today going through this, and I didn't read the bear's claws stuff or a bar's claws. Their wingspan is wider than most humans are tall. They can swoop in on their prey at, in the canopy at speeds of. 50 miles per hour. Wow. Wow. Morpho butterflies. Uh, I had the joy in my life of actually being able to see live in the wild morpho butterflies. They are incredible and they're huge. Their, their wings are about as big as my, my hands. I have pretty little hands, but like, um, uh, they're incredible. Howler monkeys. Love. Hummingbirds. My personal favorite. So what's happening to the rainforest? Not too long ago, rainforests made up about 6 million miles of the Earth's surface. Less than half of that remains today. This is the figure that is very hard. Each day, the equivalent of 80,000 football fields of rainforest is lost. So why? So basically the rainforests are being decimated that's slashed and burned for timber, charcoal, charcoal products, palm oil cultivation, cattle ranching, farming, and urban expansion. This becomes this, 
and this. And this. Why is it important to preserve and protect tropical rainforests? The rainforests are home to roughly 50% of the world's plant and animal species. We said we saw that earlier, 50%. Half. Approximately 20% of our planet's fresh water is found there. I should drink some water, okay. And this is a really good analogy. Rainforests are the Earth's lungs. They produce a great percentage of the world's oxygen, including that which you are breathing right now, no matter where you are in the world. So let's take a deep breath and thank the rainforest. We are all dependent upon the gifts of the rainforest. This rainforest is vital to the Earth's entire ecological balance. and what can be done. So we're gonna talk about that next. Thank you, Pat. Saving the rainforest begins with awareness and that's why we created this presentation and that's why we're gonna go forward with our candy culprit and learn more about why they're disappearing. All right, so I'm going to now uh, show you something. Thank you, Pat. I'm gonna share my screen. And this is, this is a great, yeah. We can have hope about this too. I'm gonna to share my screen. And first of all, I'm gonna take you to hopefully you can see this. Do you all see? Give me a thumbs up if you see the New England Primate Conservancy. Just give me a thumbs up if you see this. Do you see the New England Primate Conservancy? Thank you. Okay, so after after our time here is done. You can go on this wonderful website and you can look up all, you can see the Prezi, you can see everything that I have, you can see the introductory video. This is the introduction. We already watched this. It's laid out beautifully. And all of the steps that we're gonna go through are here. So if you miss something, if you wanna go back and look at something, all you need to do is go online. And for teachers, there's a lot of stuff for teacher people. Okay, I'm gonna share with you the first video in our project after the introduction. Do you have that up? My tech support. Here we go. Thanks, Azra. I'm on the case, and so are you. First thing we have to figure out as detectives, who's our client? We're going to watch a Prezi. Let's educate ourselves a little bit about life in the tropical rainforest. Either pause this video and click over and watch it now and then come back, or you can watch it after seeing all of the instructions. Action item two. Adopt a rainforest animal from these rainforest game tiles. There are lots of interesting, wonderful, and unique animals to choose from. Who did you choose? If you adopted a primate, you're in luck. Because the site you're already on has so much information for you. If you decide to pick a non-primate, you can just do an online search to find out more about them. Now that you've adopted an animal from the rainforest, and that you've really researched their life, their habits, their family, and their group activities. Write a paragraph or more about your client animal using all the information you've gathered about who they are, their life in the rainforest, and what threats they are facing. You can use a just the facts sort of approach, or you can get creative. Hey, tell it like a detective story. All right, detectives, we got an important story to tell. Let's get to work. And I got on mute and I'm back. So 
Um, the first thing that we're gonna do in this project is you adopt a rainforest animal as your client. So if you like detective stories, um, one of the first things that always happens in the detective stories are, you know, our private investigators sitting in their office and in comes some, you know, attractive, wonderful creature that is like, I need help. So you're gonna think of one of these rainforest animals as that attractive, wonderful creature that needs your help. And you're going to, you can pick any of the ones we saw in the, um, in the Prezi. You can pick, um, and I'm gonna show you, hope you can see the screen. So if you go to the site, there's also these so super cool, um, game tiles. And what these are, you can print these out. They're gorgeous. So they're basically all the animals we saw in the Prezi. Um, but you can print them out and have your own image of them. You can have a little picture of your client. So we have the tree frogs, we have the snakies, we have the jaguars, we have the marmosets. Um, or if you want to look at more rainforest primates, look at these cards. There's all these other guys here that you can also pick. So just take a moment, you don't have to stick with it if you don't want to, but just take a moment and on your separate document or um, write it down on your own piece of paper and, and pick an animal that's gonna be your animal. And this animal is who you're gonna keep in mind, you're working for them. They're the person, they're, they're the animal that you, I guess they're not a person. I kind of think of those people, I guess. <laughs> they're who you're working for. And if you wanna share who you picked, you can put that in chat. I can get back to my chat. Stop sharing share. Anybody wanna put an animal in chat? Anyone that they find that they really wanna know more about? Toucan, Puffin, anybody? Somebody that you saw there that you, like I need to know more? Red Panda. <laughs> oh, yeah. Orangutan. Mark, you're in luck because orangutans are definitely affected by what we're going to be talking about next with our next clue. <laughs> I love snakes, personally. I think they're so cool. Super glider. Right on. Capuchin, spider monkey, yay. Oh boy, <laughs> the cock of the rock, isn't, isn't that, I, I love those birds, they're so cool. Okay, awesome. So, and when you write up your little narrative, it can really just be about, these are the, this is the food they eat, this is the layer of the rainforest they live in, um, these are their mating habits, these are their lifestyles, um, or you can get really creative with this and just tell a whole narrative, your choice. Um, but just keep that in mind as we move on. All right, next thing I'd like to know from you is what's your favorite candy? Go ahead and put that in your chat. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring out a prop. I got some candy right here. I'm a big candy fan. So oh, put, put your favorite, oh, candy corn, oh, okay. What else do we got? Mm-hmm, Mike's an extra Swedish fish. I, I'm a big fan of Swedish fish. I could probably eat my weight in Swedish fish. I love nerds. Those nerds ropes, I'm gonna be totally honest with y'all. I kind of have like, I have to like not eat candy most of the time because once I start eating candy, I have a really hard time stopping. I love M&M's, chocolate, anything, totally. Mounds. Twix, love Twix. Reese's, mm-hmm. <laughs> 100 grand candy corn Skittles, M&M's chocolate. Okay, this is all great. Skittles. So, wait, wait, what did you hold up, Pat? 
Well, I can't see it. <laughs> it's blending into your background. Is it a chocolate bar? Say it. You're Help. muted. Chocolates of Vermont. Oh. Um, yeah, delicious. Got, is it got honey in it and maple? Everything. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. Okay. So um, you may have your candy with you, like Pat and like me. <laughs> and then what I'd like you to do is if you have your candy with you, you can just look right here and you're going to find, um, well, maybe I should put it like right here. That works. You're going to look at the ingredients. And if you look at the ingredients, like I can see mine says organic cacao beans, organic almonds, organic cane sugar, organic puffed quinoa, <laughs> organic cocoa, butter, sea salt. Now, I, I did make these videos, so I've started looking a lot more at my candies just to, no spoiler alerts, but, um, but yeah, so this is what the ingredients in, in my candy are. If you do not have your candy with you, what you can do is you can do an online search and it's pretty easy, but you'd be surprised at how hard it is sometimes to do things that seem like they're pretty easy. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you how to do an online search of the ingredients of one of these. Hold quick beep, please. I have so many windows open. Not this. How do I get to a new tab here? Well, just like this. Yeah. That work? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Y'all, yeah. I use Zoom all the time, but I'm on his computer because um, my computer is so old. It sometimes has a lot of problems sharing videos. That's the that's the real story. Um, okay, so I'm going to share. So let's take, let's take M&Ms. I'm gonna say, what are the ingredients? Maybe you'll spell ingredients right, not like me. In M and M's. Dun, 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 whoa, sugar, cocoa mass, skimmed milk powder, cocoa butter, lactose, starch, milk fat, palm fat, glucose syrup, shea fat, stabilizer, gum arabic, dextrin, glazing agents, beeswax and canuba wax, colors, E100 carmine, E132, E133, et cetera, et cetera, beetroot concentrate, oh, and I guess there's more. Um, There's more. Oh, this this is going to give us a lot of information, actually. Um, sugar Shield. Oh, so there's stuff in the Sugar Shell, and there's stuff in the Milk Chocolate Center. Um, and then we got the Palm. Oh, there's something else here. I want you guys to look at. <gasps> there's emulsifiers, soya, lecithin, salt flavorings, Palm kernel oil. Antioxidants may contain all these other things. There's a couple things I want to draw your attention to um, for the purposes of our, of our exploration. Maybe you know what all of these ingredients are. I don't, but I mean, I have like, I've been looking at the backs of pa packages for a while. So I know that lactose is a milk product type thing. And then there's milk fat, glucose syrup. I know that that's a sugar base. Um, so I know what some of these are, but if you don't know what you, these are, you can do something really cool, which is you can say, what is soy lecithin made of? Oh, it's made from soybeans. Okay. So one of the exercises that you're going to do is you're going to look up the ingredients of your favorite candy. And you're going to explore any of the unfamiliar ingredients and see what is in them. And then you're going to circle 
anything that has palm in it. So here you have palm kernel oil. That would be one you circled. There was another palm I saw somewhere. Palm fat. And the reason why you're going to circle these, I'm going to show you a video about right now. Thanks, Ezra. So, here I am, doing research about my client, enjoying a chocolate bar. I love candy. And I find out that one of the products that they're cutting down the rainforest to produce is palm oil. And I'm like, palm oil? What the heck is palm oil? Palm oil is sourced in places in the world where it is cheaply produced, but it actually has a very high cost. The habitat of many species, some that are critically endangered. So there are lots of things happening with candy production that may not be so sweet. Suddenly, this candy that I'm eating brings the issues of what's happening in the rainforest as close as the chocolate that's in my hand. So how do I know where the stuff in this comes from? And how do I know which ingredients are part of the problem of the... Action item. Make a list of your favorite candy or candy that your family buys regularly. You could type out the list on your computer too. It might make it easier when you have to input it into your final project. Action item. Make a list of the ingredients. If you don't have the candy physically present, you can easily find the ingredients online. If you don't know what the ingredients are, it's simple to find out. Just input the name into an internet search to find out what it is. Flag any word that has palm anywhere in the name. The trick is, palm oil goes by over a thousand different names in consumer products. Action item. Find the name of the company that produces the candy. If you have the candy present, it's on the packaging. If not, you can find it online. Detectives, we got palm oil. And we got the name of the company that's producing it. But the question is, how are they producing it? I'm trying. Okay, yeah, so the question is, so we looked at it, you have your candy, you look up the ingredients, you flag anything with palm, and then you look up who produces the chocolate. So where you find that, like for, the, for in my case, It'll say made by, made by. Uh, Pat, who, can you show us who makes your candy? <laughs> well, if I knew you wanted me to do this, um, hmm. You know what? I would need my other glasses to look at this, so I can't tell you. <laughs> that, that, that's okay. It's, but you can put it up. Put it up to the screen. Put, just put it up. Put it up there. You can put it. Maybe. Maybe we'll see it. No. Eh, maybe not. Never mind. <laughs> it's, it's all blurring into the background. Um, but it is so basically. Yeah. If you if you if you look at the back of a package, it's on there. Now, if you like, I said. I'm, I'm just, just in case any trigger treaters show up. Um, so these are little tiny uh, peanut butter cups. They're individually wrapped. 
you know, in case any trick or treaters come this year, which may not happen. But if they did, I'm prepared or I'll eat them all. Um, so individually wrapped, they don't have the information on it. So you have to go to the actual box. If you go to the actual box, then you see here are the ingredients. And then if you look down here at the bot at the bottom, oh wow, this is made by Unreal Brands in Boston. <laughs> local, it's a local candy company. So um, so that's how you find out the name of the company. And the reason why you need the name of the company, uh, does anybody have any guesses they want to put in the in the Ooh, our candy has no palm oil. That's what Anya says. Okay, great. Um, so if your candy doesn't have palm oil, it's still, you should know who the, who the um, producer is because that's what we're, that's gonna be our next step. So figure out the producer of that candy. And um, no, I just lost my thought, I went away. Um, so, and if you guys can type in the chat, um, any of the names of the producers that you have that you know? Our candy has no palm oil, Trader Joe's. Okay. Sometimes, Anya, I ate these things called, um, they're called peanut snacks. I love them. I got them from Trader Joe's and I turned over the package, palm oil. So there's a question though. How do they produce that palm oil? Is, you know, because everything comes down to how is it sourced? For example, I love coffee. I love it. But is it produced in a way where it is harming habitats or is it produced in a way where it's not? So it really depends on, on the company and how they produce it. So does anybody wanna put in anything else about if you can see the name of the person, I'm not the person, the company that makes the candy? Anybody else have any? Enjoy this peanut butter cup as I wait. Anyone else? Okay, if you don't know, it's as easy again, is going on the in internet and saying, who produces M&Ms? Who produces Skittles? And that will tell you the name of the um, company that produces that, that candy. All right, detectives, we've been working now for 45 minutes. Good job and good work. And thanks for hanging with me. We're gonna move on now to a really important question. We're going to start the real part of our investigation. Here's, here's where we're going to get into some things where we're going to have to really use our critical thinking. All right. Okay. And get the next video. That's right. Detectives, I need to find out more about the company that makes this chocolate. And since I've gotten used to looking at the backs of packages, I'd like to know a little bit more about who makes other products I might find around my house, what's in them, and who's behind them. I'm on the case, and I'm a serious detective. produces this coffee. Guess who produces this cat food? That done in there? Guess who produces this toilet paper? And we're out! Well, now I know that some companies produce everything from candy to cat food. And I know that there's palm oil derivatives in everything from shampoo to peanut butter. But I gotta stick on the candy lead. I have to find out more about the company that produces that candy. Action item, do an online search. Use as keywords the company's name and terms like deforestation or sustainability 
or palm oil production. Find at least three different sources that discuss the company's environmental practices. Detective tip. You are going to be using the company's website, but not for this, because what the company says their environmental practices are and what other people say their environmental practices are may not be the same thing. There are lots of consumer scorecards on environmental practices that you can use. Also, if it is a big candy company, chances are there have been articles and major publications about them. Collect these sources. Evaluate their credibility. Detective tip. A credible source should have an author and a date and should have sources of their own. So, now we know what other people are saying about the company that produces our favorite candy. And we have cited our sources, so we have evidence. Detectives, it's time. We're gonna take this straight to the top. We're gonna talk to the candy boss. We're totally gonna talk to the candy boss. Okay, can does anybody and and for this, if you want to unmute and 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 say something, like I would love that. Oh, so Pat says no palm oil in my chocolates and comes from a sustainable forestry initiative. There, oh, Pat, I love your detective hat. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Um, can somebody tell me? Um, can somebody tell me what uh, citing your sources? is has anybody heard that before yes i see a hand there i don't see. yes so it's basically saying where your sources come from like the date the author and making sure they're credible yes thank you so um thank you so much perfect answer i can tell you um so i have not only been a student of the school of life for years but i have done a lot of higher education people get crazy about how you cite your sources. I'll tell you, uh, I'm doing these, these grad school classes and I spent probably at least a quarter of my time making sure that it was in the correct APA style of source citing, which can be um, very laborious if you're a um, kind of chaotic creative like I am. However, it is very important when you are trying to figure out where the information comes from. One of the things that's in particular confusing about life nowadays is that there's a lot of bias in terms of, well, everybody has a bias. I, I mean, I personally don't believe that objectivity is possible, but it's important to know what that bias is when you're evaluating what that person is saying. So you have to consider what kind of source this is. So if you're looking at something about a candy company from the candy company, it doesn't mean it's not valid. It just means it's going to possibly be mm, favoring their practices, which may or may not be as good as they say they are. It's the same thing as if you, you know, you ask me, hey, how awesome was that paper that you wrote? <laughs> it was really awesome. But you might ask, you know, my teacher and they'll be like, eh, it was okay. <laughs> it wasn't that awesome. So you have to, you have to consider the source of where it comes from. Um, and so to cite it, depend, since you're, if, if you're doing this for school, then it's whatever your school, how they want you to cite it. For my purposes, if you're going to do this project and let me see it, just giving the website or the name of the book or however you find your source, just let me know what it is. And um, that, will, that will be great. Um, and then the other thing that's really interesting that I found as I was putting these videos together is how many awesome sources there are about uh, environmental scorecards. So the one that I showed in the video, the, um, the green scorecard, you can go into that and uh, they do, a fantastic job of listing basically the, uh, the different practices that a company has, how um, their score on how they treat their workers, the, their score on their environmental practices, their score on how they source all of their ingredients, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
this alone, this step alone can take you in a really deep dive of a rabbit hole. You could end up spending hours, days, months, just looking up different companies and what their practices are. Um, but it's really important because that is the number one way in which those of us who live here in Boston or in the Boston area or in Brockton or in Massachusetts are part of what is happening in the rainforest is the products that we buy and, what, and, and our consumer awareness. It may seem like a small thing, but actually it's a really big thing. So when you go after your candy boss, <laughs> it's important to look around at all the different sources around who they are. Again, if you, let's say, are looking at a, a source and it's um, saying something around the lines of, uh, uh, this company makes awesome chocolate and we are really ethical and sustainable and all of that, and that's on the company website, you can take that into account, but also look at what other people say about them. And then look at who those other people are. What is their bias? If, you know, M&Ms is saying, we're really great and our palm oil is totally sourced sustainably. And then the, the Hershey's is like, they're not, they're not sustainable. You can be like, hmm, well, maybe Hershey's might have something against Mars. M &M. So, so just bear that into balance. This is why you got to be a detective. All right. As we're in about an hour, these are the main things I want from you as detectives to, to weave into something. Your animal, your, um, and a narrative about them, information about them, uh, the candy, the candy that you like, and the practices of the company. Now, if you had something, let's say, um, like Skittles, or you have something that doesn't use palm oil, it, it still is important to investigate that company because just because that candy doesn't have palm oil in it, other candies that they make may have palm oil in it. So what you want to look at is what are the practices of that company entirely? And maybe they don't use palm oil, maybe they don't use, but they, they really have a bad way of sourcing their cocoa beans, which is a whole nother ball of wax. Um, who, I can't remember who had the orangutan. What's the orangutan? It's like, whoever had the orangutan? Orangutan, I think it was me. who had that? I think it was me. It was you? Okay. Orangutans are one of the primary animals that are endangered by palm oil. It is so destructive. The palm oil production has been so, has really decimated the species of orangutans. So um, even if your favorite candy doesn't have palm oil in it, if you were working for the orangutans, what I would advise is look at what are the companies, the candy companies that use palm oil the most. And so you can, you can, venture off from your personal favorite chocolate to look at what candy companies are out there that are using chocolate um, that, that use palm oil. Check out Vivian's hat. Where's Vivian's hat? Where is it? Ah, oh, <laughs> Vivian, I love it. I just went to gallery view. I haven't had that this whole time. <laughs> love it. Okay, we'll go back to speaker view. Okay. All right, we're gonna move on to the next step. We're gonna go try and find the candy boss. I hope you're all ready because it's not easy. So, I was hot on the trail of the candy boss. You know, the person in charge of making all the decisions for the candy company. Is candy boss there? Yeah, I'm looking for the candy boss. Yes, I'll hold. Yeah, I'm trying to get a hold of the candy boss. Yes, I'll hold. I'm holding, yes. Yes, I'm still on hold. Anyone seen a candy boss? I knew the list of suspicious ingredients. 
I'd done my research, and I knew the reputation of the company I was looking at. But how could I get in touch with them? Guess what? Not as easy finding the candy boss as I thought. And that's when I realized, hey, doesn't every website have a contact us button? Go to the company's website. Usually, if you scroll down to the very bottom of the page, you will find a button that says contact or contact us. Click on that. Action item. Now that you have the email address of where you're going to send that letter or that form of where you're going to send that letter to, now you have to actually write the letter. If you need help writing your letter, there are two samples on this page. One is sort of a fan letter. If you found out that the company that makes the candy that you like has sustainable practices and cares about how they source them, you can write them a letter and tell them how much you appreciate that. But if, like me, you found out that the company has not such a great reputation, you need to tell them who you are, how old you are. You need to tell them about your rainforest client. You have to tell them about why you're concerned. And you have to tell them about the research you've done. And that if they don't change their ways, you may not be able to enjoy their candy anymore. It isn't worth it to you to have the sweet candy for the cost of the disappearing habitat. So, write your letter. Make sure you use your feelings and your concerns and cite your sources. Detectives, it's time for you to write your story. So, oh. hi. hi. <laughs> How's it going? So, in that last video, we watched about trying to find out where you're going to contact the company. This is not as easy as you might think. You have to do some digging. I'm not going to lie. So, even if you go to the contact us button on the page of this, you know, website, it might have a, um, a form letter you have to fill out. It might have um, other ways in which they divert you. <laughs> so you have to keep at it and you have to find a way to, um, to, to find a way to make your voice heard. It's really important when you discover something that uh, if the company that makes your favorite candy is something that you appreciate, you appreciate their practices, it's important to let them know that that makes a difference to you. That the reason why you buy that candy is because, or maybe you just love the candy, but that you also really appreciate the way in which they source them. Companies need to know things like that. But it is just as important, maybe more so, if they have practices that you do not agree with that are help up. Uh, I got some, tw I got Twizzlers there from <laughs> Avery. <laughs> yeah, we should look up Twizzlers. Um, that if you have, um, if you disagree with their practices, you need to let them know. Sometimes writing a letter like this can be hard. So I'm gonna show you quickly. Um, some samples of how you can write this letter. So here we are at the fantastic New England Primate Conservancy page. Are you all seeing this page? Can somebody give me a thumbs up if you can see the video? We thank you, thank you. Okay, so this has everything that we saw on the video. Have your teacher or parent look over your letter and where, where you are sending it because this can be tricky. So if you're not, if you're not an adult, this is something that you do want some support doing because it's not um, it's not intuitive a lot of times. And I have seen even sites where they will only accept letters from people over the age of 18. So that means that you may need your parent or guardian or teacher to sign off on it. And send it as an email. I mean, uh, if they accept letters, you can send a physical letter, but most most of the most of the time we just do emails today. Um, so Every company website has a contact us page, every company website. So if you dig around, you might even be able to find a more direct email contact. 
a person whose job it is to speak to consumers, for example. Here's the thing, you may get the runaround. And if you get the runaround, don't give up. Also, if you make your own letter, please, please share it with me. I would really love to see the letters that you write. Um, before you send it off, if it's a form, make sure you take a screenshot. You want to have a evidence trail of what you've done. Make sure you keep track of the letter and the date you sent it. All right. We're about to wrap up the steps for this project. What I would love to know is, does anybody have any question about what the steps are? Let's see something in chat. Yes. Twizzlers contain palm oil. Thank you, Deborah. Avery, Twizzlers contain palm oil. Looks like you have a case ahead of you. This is gonna be good. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's in, it's in palm oils in, it's in a lot of stuff. It is in shampoo. It is in like so many consumer products and I guess it's in Twizzlers too. Um, so can, does anybody put into the group chat any questions that you have about the steps so far? Any questions? Like anything. Do you want us to put our paragraph into the letter? Well, it depends on what your paragraph is. I would say the paragraph is something that you want to keep separate. The paragraph about your animal in terms of what they eat and, and how great they are. Um, but you can include, you know, about how awesome your animal is in the letter. The main thing about the letter is what you're saying to the, to the company is you're, you're telling them why you're concerned. So a little bit about your animal is very important. But if you go on a nice, you know, sort of like long narrative about your animal, what they eat, what their behavior is, all of that sort of stuff, you may want to keep the long version separate so that the letter is more direct to the company. I want the letter in the project, in your final project. Great question, Anya. Anyone else? Yes, definitely. We would love to see any paragraphs that you write about your, about your animal. We wanna see actually all of these steps, which we'll talk about in the final weaving this all together. So we really want you to share your work with us. You know what, even if you don't, even if you don't finish it, I'd love to see as far as you get personally. Uh, Mark, you have a question. Oh. Uh, what are the five steps again? Because I would like to write it down on a piece of paper. Okay. So the five steps are more general, but there's a bunch of action, action items. So the five steps that we have are the names of each of the part of the tops, but I'll just give it to you in part of the tops or each of the sites. So we have your, you're on the case, you get a clue, the investigation. Those are the names of the videos. So there's five parts of that. But the steps that you're going to take, just in simple form, choose an animal. Learn about the animal. A rainforest animal. That's all in step one. Step two, find a candy, a favorite candy, or a candy that you buy frequently, or a candy that you might know use, uses palm oil. Look at the ingredients of that candy, investigate those ingredients. Find out who makes that candy. So those are all in step two. The next step is do some research about that company and cite your sources. Then the last step is to write a letter to the company. Mark, it's a lot of steps. It's tough being a detective. Yes. <laughs> did, did that answer your question, Mel? Yes, it answered my question. Thank you. That's a great question, too, because I know it is a lot of stuff. So basically, animal, candy, ingredients, candy company, letter. So I guess it does come down to that five. Anyone else?
Okay, so if you have questions that you think of later, and you're like, uh, oh, now I know a question. I'm putting my email right now. This is my personal email. laurabar at gmail.com. I'm also at lauraleebar at gmail.com. You can send to either of these and ask me any questions. Also, once you finish the project, that's where you can send it, okay? And then, um, then I can look it over, write you a little narrative. It'll be awesome. Okay. Does everybody see my email? Thumbs up. Okay. Also, in case you didn't see it, very important. This is the name of the website, neprimateconservancy.org, where all the magic is contained. It's an incredible, incredible website. Okay, neprimateconservancy.org, my emails. All right, we're gonna watch. Oh, unshare your screen, sorry. Sorry. Okay, so if we have all of you have my emails, you have the New England Primate Conservancy.org. I'm going to share with you next our final video. And then I'm going to show you some resources that have ways for you to put your project together, maybe in an easier way than you might think of on your own. But hey, if you think of one on your own, that's probably going to be even cooler. Um, I would say I have a particular love if you want to create a little fun video. The same. All right. Ezra's on it. Detectives, I wanted to wrap this all up in a pretty little bow, but instead, I got threads unraveling every which way. To recap, I went to the company website and I clicked on the Contact Us button. From there, I wrote a very detail-oriented, wonderful letter about their environmental practices and my concerns. I got a form letter in response. It said they appreciate my concerns and a bunch of other stuff that frankly sounds like a bunch of hooey. I'm wondering what kind of response you got. Detectives, here's where we need to take this case to the next level. We have to tell everybody what we know. Action item. Create a need using your client animal and some of the key facts you have learned. Share this on social media with friends and family and the public. Share it with us here at the New England Primate Conservancy too. Action item. See if your friends and family have interest in also investigating the products they buy and if they'll help you write more letters to companies about their environmental impact and their products. In some cases, Companies have promised to change their environmental policies based on feedback from consumers, just like you. Also, now you have the makings for a sweet project that you can do for school or to make your case for the public. Action item. Make your own detective case file. Weave together each of the action items from all of the steps. From this, you will be able to make something that's very compelling. You can make it as a PowerPoint. You could do a video like this one. You could even make it an essay or a performance. The key is the steps that you've done and the research that you've done, people want to know about it. So find a way to show it and share it. One thing is for sure, the more people understand the impact their consumer choices have on the rainforest, the better. If we work together, we can make a difference for these animals who call the rainforest home. 
Well, detectives, it's far from over. But I am so glad you are on the case with me. No one can do everything, but everyone can do something. And for the sake of all of us inhabitants of planet Earth, let's do what we can. Well, I hope I see you around as we continue to try and solve the case of the disappearing habitat. Happy sleuthing. I just want to call your attention to this, this last quote again. It's one of my favorites. And um, I just think that it's important for us to, to really know, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. So friends, um, lots of times all of the problems in the world may seem overwhelming. And if you start really digging into something like this, it may seem like a lot, but this is how things change. And the, um, the things shared, the Kellogg's, there were two girls who petitioned Kellogg's again and again and again and again and again about their, their palm oil practices. And what finally happened is Kellogg's was like, okay, okay, we'll change, we'll change, we'll make a, we'll, we'll, we'll get more sustainable practices. And those girls were like, and we're going to be here and make sure you do that. And they're still following up on that. Your rights as a consumer, your voice as a consumer is really important. So I know that this may seem like it's a lot for a project, but just even starting it, whatever you can do, is a big win in terms of raising awareness and, and helping out all of the inhabitants of the rainforest and the lungs of our planet. Okay, again, if you, I'm gonna share again where it is on the, um, on the site so you can find it easily. The case isn't closed. So here's, how, here's some things that we saw. If you go to, click here for good detective strategies and helpful hints, you're gonna find the sample letters. You're gonna see how to create a slideshow presentation. There is a, a downloadable PowerPoint you can, that has everything easily laid out. And so you can just insert the information that you have. So you can download a, a PowerPoint template. You can create a meme or in infographics, how to cite project sources and helpful web sources. Um, so these are all really, who's, who's, who's annotating the screen? I see annotation. So here are some sample letters. There's a fan letter and then there's a, hey, um, my name is Phyllis Spade. It's named after like Philip Marlowe and Sam Spade. They're old school detective characters that I love. And I'm a student at the School of Hard Knocks. I've been doing a project about deforestation and how it is linked to palm oil. And I learned that my client, the red-chested mustache tamarind, is losing her home at an alarming rate and palm oil production is a big part of that problem. So then you can say something, I was happy to find that my favorite candy does not use any palm oil. And then this is a fan letter site. You can use these, please. Just copy, paste, add your own stuff, make it your own, go ahead and use these templates. And then the one sample letter one is a little bit more of a, hey, practices aren't so great. Um, so is it possible for you to reconsider your practices? Be advised that you're not gonna necessarily get um, a kind of response that you want. You might get a, we are, we are well aware of this sort of thing or some sort of hooey. But if you keep at it, you might get a response that means something. And then here's a meme or infographic. Avoid candy made with palm oil. I can't do this a lot in my home. I would love to see if you all, I know that some of you can make amazing memes. Please, um, please make me a meme. 
make a meme that we can share with the New England Primate Conservancy. This would be really cool. And here, this is this is a wonderful source that you can use for creating memes. Here's a thing about how to cite sources. Here is some awesome web resources. If you don't know where to start with your um, your search, these have some great great information. Here's a chocolate retailer scorecard. Here's some rainforest friendly options for candy, products without palm oil. So here's some great things. To try. Okay, so you should have at this point, uh, you have the website, you have uh, the videos are all on the website too. Um, see. Oh, yes. So if you look in the chat, you guys, anybody can copy and paste what's in the chat right there. And that has wonderful information for how to get to what we're talking about. Okay, I want to say a huge thank you again to Deborah Curtin at the New England Primate Conservancy. Thank you, Deborah. I want to say thank you um, to Pat for allowing me to be able to share this information <clears throat> with you. And I want to thank Ezra for helping to create those videos and for being my tech support. Um, but more than anything else, I really want to thank all of you for being here with me and for going through this process with me and sticking with this. And I am really excited to see what you are gonna do with this project. Make it your own, take it to the next level, talk to the candy boss. Thank you so much for, for being here. Um, and that's, that's about it, unless anybody has any additional questions. Oh, I see a question. Yes? Deborah? Well, I just wanted to thank Laura for doing this. I'm the founder of New England Primate Conservancy, and I wanted to thank all of you for being here this evening. This is really exciting for me to watch this, to watch the presentation tonight, and I hope that you've all enjoyed it. I also want to thank Pat and the Brockton Public Library and the Brockton Cable System for running this. And I'm, Laura, you've done an awesome job. Thank you. And Laura created this whole lesson, which is amazing. So if you think you can't make a difference, you absolutely can. Look what Laura has done with this. I started New England Primate Conservancy to make a difference for all sorts of primates, and it's worked. It's never easy. But if you believe in something, you keep doing it and you can make a difference. What Laura talks about with the candy companies, just keep in mind that there's nothing more important than public opinion. So if you write to the candy company and tell them, I'm not going to eat your candy because of the palm oil problem, they will have to find another means of producing their candy and they will. So it's very, very powerful. This whole lesson is very powerful. So thank you for those few minutes. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. And just to just to to um, to add to that, the idea of yes, you can make a difference. Yes, you can do something. It, it really is. It starts with one one step that you take and then you take another and then another. It really is like being a detective. And then you you start to come to the next thing and then the next thing and the next thing. And it's exciting. It's open ended. It's critical thinking. You stay on it. Things can change. Janet, you had a question? I just wanted to say what a wonderful teacher you are, Laura, and what a great detective you are. And thank you to Pat and thank you to Ezra. And I wish every kid in the Brockton school system and elsewhere uh, could see this. It, it could make such a difference to, to what's happening in the world. And with kids on remote learning, now, it, I mean, this is perfect, I mean, to, to show this to kids, and I hope that this will get out to school systems in the area, so thank you all. Thank you, we hope that too. That's what we, we really want. <laughs> and so, yeah, and, 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 and kids, please tell your teachers about it. Um, and I will do what I can if you finish this project to try and get you extra credit. I can be pretty compelling. So uh, if you do this on your own, I will try to sweet talk your teachers. I think I saw a hand up for Anya. Did I see a hand up over there? No? Anya? Yes. Um, I was just wondering, do you have any like 
websites recommended to create memes? Yes, uh, that's a great question. And that is on that, that last page that I showed you, the helpful uh, detective tips. It's canva.com, C-A-N-V-A.com. I think that's right, Deborah, right? Canva. 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 Yeah. I use them for uh, all of the graphics that we create for New England Primate Conservancy. I create them on Canva. Awesome site. You can be your own graphic designer. It's true. Ivanji? I just wanted to thank you all for this uh, program. I really learned a lot. Oh, thank you so much, Ivanji. Oh, I'm did I say it right or did I mess it up again? I did it. <laughs> I have a habit of, um, I had a student that I called Joseph, whose name was Thomas, and a student whose name was Thomas, who I called Joseph because my brain rewired them. So <laughs> thank you for being patient with me. And thank you for being here and for your wonderful contributions in the chat. I really appreciate it. It was really um, awesome to see your face and to see um, your dedication and having your eyes uh, um, focused and, and here with me. I teach online a lot. So I, I often have students who are like them. <laughs> so thank you. Oregon, did you have a question? Um, I don't have a question, but thank you. I really enjoyed the program about learning about the primates and what we can do to help the environment because sometimes it feels like we can't do anything. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that, Boradine. I really do. And uh, thank you so much for being here and for being so attentive and so for being um, and for sharing that. I really appreciate it. I have a question. Mark. Uh, I tried to go on it and I was trying to find where was the videos that you were doing. Yeah. I couldn't really find it. Okay. Do you see in the chat? Do you see? Uh, in the chat, um, the message from Deborah Curtin. So Mark, when you're on the website, go to where it says humane education in the menu. Do you see that? Oh, yes, I see that. Okay, and then go to the case of the disappearing habitat, the candy culprit, get started and click on that and that starts you on, on the program. Uh, okay. Did it work? Thank yes, thank you. Perfect, you're welcome. Anyone else? Am I missing any? Let me go to the gallery view so I can see everybody's faces. All these awesome people who are here. So thank you all. I'm, I'm really, really grateful for all of your presences here. And I really appreciate it. Please email me what you do with this project. I can't wait to see it. Okay, now, oh, Pat. Is, isn't it true that you're going to send them um, <gasps> a, something if they get you some information? That is right. Thank you for reminding me. So not only will I send you a super cool narrative about how awesome you are, which will be, you know, just the facts because you are. Um, this is the wonderful spyglass that, um, let me share my screen with you, that Deborah created. You see it? So you'll get this super cool spyglass. It's an actual. It's, it's, it's a badge. Oh. It's a digital badge. I mean, if you have a LinkedIn page, you can put that on your on your page. <laughs> if you're already on LinkedIn, um, you can have it on your Facebook page or any other social media that you have. So it's just a cool little um, way for you to be like, I did this project and then it was pretty awesome. I got this little spyglass. Uh, this is my tiny spyglass. Just where are you located? Uh, I'm in Brockton. Yeah, yeah, but the the conservancy Merrimack, Massachusetts. I'm sorry, Merrimack, Massachusetts. Merrimack, thank you. Yes, yep. we're practically practically New Hampshire. And I know most well, actually, Ellie, aren't you up in uh, 
New Hampshire? Or where are you these days? I think Ellie's up in New Hampshire. I know Vivian is down in Louisiana. Wow. Yeah. Um, and and everybody, go ahead. Oh, and then I just wanted to make sure everybody that you have my email if you need it. So you can send me your projects. L-A-U-R-A-B-A-H-R at gmail.com or lauraleebar at gmail.com. <laughs> Or you can always send something to me and I'll get it to you. Or yes, or you can send it to Pat she'll get it to me. Okay. All right. All right, I'm gonna sign off. Happy detectiving. I know you guys are gonna find out some cool things. So stick at it and let me know what you find out. I'd love to see what you're gonna do with this project. Um, and, uh, oh, I see one more question. I have a comment about something. Um, let me see. Trying to find it. Uh, which one was the? I was thinking of it. It was like something about doing something with like the first floor or something like that. Yeah, the Prezi. I think yeah, that one. Okay, so if you go to step one, if you go to step one of the of the disappearing habitat if you go to that page and you scroll down you'll see that prezi okay i see it you find it yeah and so you can spend that prezi is so awesome and it has all the animals and it's super cool good job tempera <laughs> I've had students who tell me that's their favorite part of the entire project. That's so, great. Yeah. Well, uh, my other comment is if I could send it to you on Thursday, since I'll be free and I'm kind of doing some schoolwork. Yes, absolutely. I would say if you can get it to me anytime before Halloween, awesome. But honestly, uh, okay. anytime. No, you do not have to do this tonight. <laughs> I mean, if you feel motivated, go for it. But yes, take your time and and have fun with it. Okay, thank you. Okay, and really, um, as you you all can probably tell, I really love um, things that are wacky and creative. So please feel free to bring your wacky, creative, original, unique selves to this project. The more wacky, unique, and yourself, the better. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Happy detectiving. Have an awesome night. Thank, Thank you, Pat. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, especially, 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 thank you, all you students who are here. I really appreciate it. Thanks for coming. Okay, can't wait to see your projects. All right, bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so one, one last thing. If, if, wait. If, you, if, Pat, you've missed, if you've missed any of this, uh, it'll be up on the Brockton Library Facebook page um, probably tomorrow. Um, and it should be on the Brockton Cable Community Access Cable YouTube channel starting next week. Thank it. you, Pat. Okay, you're welcome. And, and with you. your permission, that those of you who do the project, with your permission, we might even put some of your projects up on the New England Primate Conservancy Facebook page. Uh, we'll get your permission to do it though, okay? okay. Parents' permission. <laughs> parents permission okay okay awesome okay you can't laura <laughs> yeah bye bye, bye. 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 Star. bye. 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 bye all bye. thank you bye all right thank you we have another program tomorrow night okay right avanji <laughs> Yeah, I've been preparing. I did uh for the additional panelists. I already put everything down. Like I got the question, and I also sent you the um background for me. Yes, I saw that. That's perfect. All right, Avanji, are you doing a presentation? Yeah, uh, I'm one of the moderators for tomorrow's event. <gasps> That's so cool. Okay. I'm gonna try and come. Yeah, it's a career panel. Um, and it would be 
great for you to maybe put your two cents into, you know, the importance of volunteering and exper experiential activities and stuff like that. Uh, what time is it at? Is it at the same time? Six to eight, you could okay. say, because there's two different panels, one from six to seven and one from seven to eight. Which one are you moderating? Um, I'm, I'm in both. I'm in both, you could say. I, we, because me and two other moderators, we each get one person. It's a panel of three. But uh, the second panel has an extra. So it's a panel of four there. So I have two. Okay. I have a, I'm teaching a voice lesson at 630, but I'll be there at six. All right. I'll be there for the first half hour. I, I'm excited. Good job. Cool. Okay, can I go get dinner now? <laughs> anyway, yeah, I guess. <laughs> I was just wondering about um for the thing. Uh is how's the order gonna be since for the second panel now? How's it gonna be for the order? Um, oh, I'm glad you said that. Um Blake Dinius is going to be about a half hour late. Mm. We had a conversation this morning and he said, well, should I forget it? And it's like, no, come when you can. So um, your focus in that second panel will be on um, Lee. And um, then when Blake comes in, you can introduce him at that point and then just fit him into the conversation. Don't go back to ask the questions. Um, you know, just wherever you are in the conversation, just to add them to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. That's all I was wondering. Yeah. I was going to send something to you later on. He had called me this afternoon. But... Okay. So yeah. All right, then I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Exactly. And I'll probably be signing on very late again because, uh, I mean, early again, because uh, that was apparently the problem 